This PS4 Slim was dropped off because they said it sounds like a jet engine, so it most likely just needs to be cleaned and I'm also going to replace the thermal paste, and I figured this would be the perfect time to do a how to disassemble video. Now this isn't a complete disassembly, this is going to be how to remove everything except the disk drive for the most part, because I want to be able to clean the vents and also replace the thermal paste, and I don't need to remove the disk drive for that, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to start by making sure that there's no disk inside. I didn't get the multiple beeps, so there's got to be something in here, and ha, this is probably our problem right here. Let's get rid of that. Yeet! Garbage game. I'm just properly turning this off by holding down the power button. Now it takes a few seconds to get that second beep, and then it takes even longer for it to actually shut down completely. <clears throat> top shell here just pulls right off. You just got to give it a little bit of pressure at the front and then yeah, it just snaps open. And the fingerprints tell me that someone has been in here once before. We're going to remove the hard drive first. So there's a little plastic cover on the back and you're just going to push to the right of it and that'll pop off. Whoops. Small Phillips head, and there's a little screw here, a little PlayStation screw that we're just gonna take out. Put that somewhere where we won't lose it. And a little ribbon here, hold on to that, pull straight out. Don't lose that. Phillips heads on the top of the board here. This is a number eight torque bit. It's just gonna take out these last few screws. There's this little anti-tamper sticker here on the back. Well, at least I think it's anti-tamper. It could just be something to make it look a little nice. However, it's on the back, so it's not a big deal anyhow. Now, some people just poke right through this to pull it out. I prefer not to. I try to carefully remove it so I can stick it back on once everything is all said and done. Now, this is coming off, obviously, as an anti-tamper, so this was Sony's way to say that you had voided your warranty and that they wouldn't work on it. The right to repair says that's BS and you can do whatever you want. I put that to the side so we don't lose it and I can put it back on later. With that screw out, we're just going to be able to gently, oh so gently, pull this out. I think. Pretty sure. There it is. I always hate doing these because I'm always afraid I'm like, I'm going to break it. I haven't broken one yet and I've seen people pulling these way harder. But it's just like, you know, a reasonable fear that I have. That I'm just going to pull the wrong way one day and just snap something in half. Ooh, that is dusty. I should be wearing my mask for this one. Now you want to pull the back out first, so and try not to put it back on. There we go. Because when you pull the back out, it's gonna slide off the front here. There we go, come on, there we are. And that's a bit of dust. And that's a bit of dust. Nice and dusty. If this is what just the basic inside looks like, I can only imagine what the air vent is gonna look like inside and the fan itself. So this should be interesting. 
Okay, we're gonna start by removing all of these little tiny itty bitty screws. What I like to do, because you have black screws and silver screws, sometimes it gets a little confusing as to which goes where. So I get a, a Sharpie here and wherever there's a black screw, I just put a little mark beside it. Now this easily wipes off. If you choose to wipe it off, really no one's gonna see this and it might even help the next guy. So sometimes I'll leave it in. You can do that or you can color in the little triangles here. The triangles just kind of tell you where these screws go. But I find this will just help you out when you're reassembling it. There's a couple little ones hidden just back here. I don't even know if my marker's gonna make it. There we go, and that didn't make it. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna color these up here. And we'll call that a victory. Um, I think I got them all. Now there's a couple little screws in here. We don't need to take those out because um, they just disassemble the disk drive and that's what we're trying to accomplish right now. If we had a problem with the disk drive, yes, but until then, no. I'm just gonna take off some of the dust. Use my little plastic tool here and I'm just gonna pop up these ribbon cable holders. I believe this one just pulls right out. Quick question for you, do I say out weird? Everybody says, I can tell you're Canadian, but to me, it sounds normal. I have like an East Coast accent at the same time. So, let me know. Uh, I believe this one pulls out as well, and this one. So there's only one that was really being held in by a connector. Just gently rock those back and forth. This is just, uh, I believe, an antenna and just gently pull up on this. You can even get a plastic tool and just kind of wedge it underneath. There it goes. Now, I try to preserve the sticker. Not a big deal if you rip it because you can easily replace it. There we go. Same with this one here. This one has a bit more of a function that it's foam padded, but not really that much. I'm using a zero size. And I'll start working on this. Hmm. So this one's a little different than this one. They're both silver, kind of hard to tell apart. So what I think I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna mark them. I believe that one came out of here. So I'm gonna mark that with an X circle maybe I'll do a circle and that's just gonna tell me where I pulled the different screw out of and of course I believe I marked that wrong right off the bat I'm gonna wipe that away before it dries I don't think it did that's okay I'll just remember it circle and circle that's the ones I need to remember Whenever I come across those short stubby ones here, I'm just gonna circle that. that did it now I'm just gonna pull out this little connector here and give it gentle wiggling back and forth there we go move that antenna out of the way and this will pop right on up oh missed one Just be careful of those ribbon cables that you don't get them caught up in here and rip something out. Oh, I didn't actually unplug that one. There we go. Beautiful. A little bit more dust, but not too much. 
Now, using the same screwdriver, I'm going to undo these clamp screws here. These ones are pretty recognizable because they have the big uh, ridge on them. If you want to call it that, hump, I don't know. this from the power supply just so I can move it I'm just going to bring this whole wire out there we go and that does it for the board now the moment of truth yeah it's a little packed up well that's your issue right there I'm going to separate the board from this here because I'm also going to replace that thermal paste and just clean up the board in general with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I have a little bit of compressed air here. Here, I have a little bit of compressed air here. There we go. Um, I don't use a lot of this, especially because there is moisture in these cans, so you just need to be really careful. Just don't one hold it upside down, and two don't hold it down for a long time. Just very short little. Little blast like that, just to get the big stuff off. What is this? Where did this come from? We'll have to figure that one out in a bit. There we go. So that just kind of gets the big dust off the board. Now when you're working on plastic, you can go ham and push it as much as you want. However, I still try to do short controlled little bursts just in case there is any components on the board. And this just cleans it up. I'm gonna take the fan apart as well and just give it a clean out. Ooh. There we are. That's not too bad. It has a little bit of a fine coating of dust on it, but I've seen worse. my cloth in here and just kind of get some of this hidden stuff. Use it on the fan. And then what I like to do is just gently push into one of the fins here and just run it around so you get all the stuff that's hiding underneath the fan on the plate. There we go. And you can go fin by fin here and just kind of get some of the dust off. However, if you do have your compressed air, who thought cleaning a system could have so many silly sounds? Now, the downside to doing all that is that you get dust all over your workplace and in your lungs. I usually do this outside. However, because I'm filming in here, I did it this you know, like in this little space, uh, yeah, in this little space, just this once. It's gonna take me a week to clean it. There we go. Now, same idea. I'm gonna use compressed air, and now the air gets sucked in this way, so I'm gonna blow it out this way. That all blown out. I'm just gonna get a toothbrush here and just kind of get some of the dust out of the fins. And then of course, I'm gonna blow away all the dirt that I just blew onto my table and my now clean PS4. Nice. Now I have my board. I'm just gonna take off the old thermal paste here. These edges always come off in big chunks. Usually come off in big chunks, I should say. And then we're just gonna run it on here. 
If you ever have trouble cleaning off thermal paste with isopropyl alcohol, try moving to a contact cleaner. I found that it works extremely well um, and really breaks it up. I've only had to do that a couple times though, mostly on 360s, just to make sure it's all nice and clean. And then I'm gonna do the same to the back of the heat sink here. Want to make sure it's nice and clean free of any debris or dust and you want it to kind of shine back yeah with that done we can start our reassembly before we reassemble just with my toothbrush i'm just going to get some of the fins here just on the side of the uh the casing because if there's dirt here it's just going to get sucked in eventually so i might as well clean it out now give it a good proper cleaning Especially back here, dust likes to build up in those. And then dust also likes to bring up these. Now when I do a deep, deep clean of these, I'll take it completely apart and I'll soak it in the, uh, I'll soak all the plastic parts in a sink for a while. But this one's just a get it functional cleaning, so I'll clean out everything I can and then make it look really presentable and clean out as much dust from the inside that I can as well. Now, anytime I put on thermal paste, people tell me it's either too much or too little. You let me know in the comments what you think it is. I'm just gonna go with, it's a functional amount. And I'd rather have too much than too little. To line this up, look for your two USB ports and your two little towers here, and then these holes for the components. And we're just going to slide those in there and then drop it directly onto that blob of thermal paste. Now I'm going to keep pressure on this because now that the thermal paste is down, I don't want to aggravate it at all. I'm just seeing some dust that I forgot on the plate here, so I'm just going to clean that off really quick while keeping this clamped down. Now that we have it flipped over like this, we're gonna get um, this little thing. Not too sure what it's called or what it does, but we're gonna put it down anyways. And then we're gonna put our bracket on top. You're gonna wanna make sure that these little indents are facing up, I guess, so you want it to be flat on the bottom. Just basically match the shape of this. What I like to do is put down one of these bracket screws, not screwed in all the way, and then put in the other one, or at least start the other one. This is just like a little bit easier, rather than trying to push down the bracket to get the other screw in. So you're gonna wanna make sure that's tightened down, not too tight, don't crank it down, just tighten it until it stops. This thermal pad got a little moved, so I'm just gonna move it back where it should be. Perfect. We're going to line up our connections, line up our connections, Just watch out for your ribbon cables, make sure your antenna isn't caught underneath it like that was. And there we are, I'm gonna plug my fan back in. And while the board is still loose, I'm going to re-thread my power cable here. I believe it sneaks right through here. I'll come back to that in just a moment anyhow. Unfortunately, I missed this little screw thing here. It goes right in here.
This little screw bracket here is going to go right into your heat sink. Just like that. And now we have to reapply our thermal paste. Hopefully when you do it, you only have to do it the once, unlike me who forgot parts. Okay, we're back to where we left off. Again, I'm gonna plug in the fan here. Got my top shield. And again, just lift up your ribbon cables so you don't squish them. Because I marked these earlier, it's gonna be way more of a breeze to put these in with using my black line for the black screws. Just re-threading this power cable. It's pretty simple. It just, you know, hook it in where it goes. On top, on top, on bottom. Now we're gonna plug it back in. God, that was way more difficult than it had to be. All right, let's drop the rest of these screws in. I have one more black screw, but I don't see where I marked it. Or if I marked it. I'm just gonna have to come back to that one. With everything screwed back together, I'm just gonna put these ribbon cables back in. Up. There we are. We're going to bring our antenna back over. Tighten that one up. There we go. Same thing on this side, just lift that up, press it down, and to plug this the antenna back in, we're just going to push it directly down on the connector, and there we are. Now, I'm going to get our bottom tray here, and I'm just going to clean this off camera using a little bit of compressed air and a cloth. Here we are, that's looking a little better. Now, slide this in, the front is here, actually, clean that really quick here, where'd my toothbrush go, there it is, get some of the stuff that's stuck in here, bottom piece on we're just going to replace the screws that were on top here these little domed ones go in the fan of course we have our uh our shield here 
Just put that in and in. There we, are. we have this little tiny one. Just gonna go in the edge here. These two. There we are. So the bigger ones will go in the middle and on the right hand side if the system is facing you. Whenever you're screwing into plastic, turn your screwdriver counterclockwise until you hear a pop and then screw it in. That just makes sure that you are in the threads and you don't end up re-threading it or cross-threading it. Uh, but you're gonna have one hell of a time pulling it out next time and you'll damage the system. Now we're gonna go into the back where this little screw was here. Same thing, counterclockwise. So you hear that pop, and then screw it in. Now I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit here with my cloth, and get a little bit of alcohol. Clean it up real nice, and I'm gonna reapply that sticker. There, you'll still see the PlayStation symbols, meaning that it's been tampered with. However, it looks way better than leaving the screw hole open. Just gonna leave my tag and the date it was cleaned for the next person. Starting at the back, I'm just going to hook it and push down. Last but not least, I'm gonna get my hard drive. Pop it back in. We'll put our PlayStation screw back on. And then we're just gonna place this on and push it in. Here we are. Now there's a little bit of dirt in the buttons here, so I'm just gonna clean that up with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I'm also gonna clean up the little Sony symbol. And then using my electric toothbrush, I'm gonna clean out the HDMI port just to ensure that it's nice and clean and functional. I use 99% anytime I'm cleaning electronics. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess there. Now you don't wanna do that very hard because you don't wanna damage the port, you just wanna clean it up. Whenever I'm cleaning something that isn't an electronic and it's plastic, I'll use 70% us for alcohol, just because it's a little easier on the plastic. I just try to avoid any electronic components when I'm using this. Now we're just gonna make sure that I didn't break anything while doing this. We have a power beep, that's good. It looks like a little bit of dust must have been stuck on my toothbrush and I just kind of put it on the HDMI port here so it's easy enough to take off. And that was the ticket, it's working fine. Yeah, that's nice. And there we are, now it's all cleaned up and it's like a stealth jet because you can't hear it. Stealthy.
Now this was a different type of video compared to my other ones, so if you like this, please let me know by either thumbing this up or letting me know in the comments. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and you can ring that bell or hit the bell, whatever the YouTube term is for that. And as always, let's save the consoles.